Hello, everyone, clinicians. This is Ali Nassay, and I'm at the Chicago Midwinter Meeting at the Brassler booth, where they have released a brand new product, which is the Endosequence BC Points 150 series. These points are low temperature gutta percha points that, along with the BC pellets, help us do uh, vertical condensation using PC sealer. So let's take a look and see if it's true. So the BC150 series is the same biceramic coated gutta percha cones except that they melt at 150 degrees so it's a lower melting temperature. And these cones are available in multiple sizes, they're basically sizes 1504 all the way to 5504 and of course you can certainly, because of the constant taper, you can trim the tips and make them different sizes. As you recall we have an advanced and a basic technique with the endo sequence, so the basic technique involves placing some of the sealer outside the tooth on a paper pad and then coating your gutta percha cone as well as your master file and put it all the way down uh, to the working length. The advanced technique on the other hand is direct injection into the canal which requires a microscope and good visualization so you don't inject too much or too little. Now the combination of using these uh, BC uh, 150 series gutta percha points as well as the uh, uh, the pellets, the BC pellets that you can use in your own gun at 150 degrees and melting temperature allows you to do a vertical condensation and uh, backfilling, down packing and back backfilling using the combination of these two materials. Okay, before we take a look at these gutta percha 150 series, let's take a look and see why is it that we need the gutta percha to be at a lower melting point. Bi ceramic sealer was designed to work in a one cone system and because it's hydrophilic and is based on ceramic particles it can very quickly become distorted if you use at high temperatures. So traditionally we've been using regular gutta percha points at temperatures above 200 degrees uh, as high as 270 degrees and uh, prolonged exposure to these kind of high temperatures over 270 degrees can dry out the sealer and the carrier that's actually keeping the premixed material together. So as a result, the solution turned out to be to uh, find gutta percha points that can melt at a lower temperature. So it takes less time, even at higher temperatures, for the material to, um, to be seared off. Uh, in the past, using the regular gutta percha, the heat carrier was in contact with the biceramic sealer for too long of a time period and that caused some dryness and graininess in the sealer that made it really unsuitable for vertical condensation. And this gutta percha series, the BC gutta percha series at 150 degrees, are a good solution and a good workaround to be able to address this issue. Of course, at the end, I will kind of uh, share with you some of my ideas about vertical condensation, whether it's really even necessary. But for those of you who are ardent fans of this particular obturation technique, uh, there is at least now a solution and a way to use the biceramic sealer with it so that you can actually get the benefit of both worlds. So let's take a look and see how this is used in a, a block using vertical condensation. Okay, so this is basically a plastic block that's already been prepared to a size 35 ESX file. And uh, you can see here that this is the master file, which is a 3504 ESX file. And after removing it, now we're able to fit in a corresponding size uh, BC150 35 uh, got a percha point. This is a matching 04 taper, got a percha point. The difference with this, with the traditional uh, BC points, is that this one actually melts at 150 degrees. So I'm using an endo sequence syringe and dispensing tip and injecting a little bit into the dispensing tip and then taking the, uh, the cone and basically coating it this way uh, very, very homogeneously and everywhere around the cone. And now I'm basically uh, putting the, seating the cone all the way down to the full working length and doing a couple of little pumping actions. And um, then I am using the pre-fitted uh, tip, which here is a fine tip, and basically just going through uh, the um, uh, cone with one single motion and removing it. You can see how easily the heat source, which in this case is an Endo Pro 270, works, and you get all the way down. Now I'm using the BC pellets using a, a, an Optura gun. You may have a different heating source. Uh, different heating gun and I'm backfilling it by making sure that the tip of the heat source gets all the way down to the base of the preparation. I'm filling the whole thing here in one shot. However, as you know, you're really not supposed to do that. That's not the way that your shielder described the original technique. You're supposed to use aliquots, two or three millimeter aliquots of gutta percha and then follow that up by deposition of the gutta percha followed by condensation. However, it seems like nowadays everybody's kind of working, uh, doing a little bit of a workaround, cheating a little bit and filling the whole thing up uh, in one shot, which we'll talk about after this in discussion. 
because I think that's actually not so good. Okay, so as you saw, this was a fairly simple way of uh, filling the uh, a block or a canal using the vertical condensation, or at least the current vertical condensation technique by uh, condensing down in one shot the BC cones and then backfilling it using the BC pellets using your you know, existing gun, whether it's an Optura gun or a VNL gun or whatever kind of a uh, gutta percha heating gun you have, you can use it with the BC point, so they're universal in use. Okay, so let's do a quick clinical case here. We have a tooth number three maxillary, first molar for you with some calcification, a necrotic pulp, and an existing crown. There's some potential decay there in the distal area of the tooth, and the crown would have to be replaced. Uh, there is some curvature around this tooth, and you can see here uh, on a different angle the calcification in the mesial buccal and the lesion at the apex of the mesial roots. So access has been made through the crown here, and instrumentation has been done. I elected to use the endo sequence, advanced endo sequence technique here and um, I'm just uh, using a little bit of final irrigation here and that's using full, full strength hypochlorite, 6% uh, um, uh, hypochlorite basically and uh, using the, uh, the macro cannula here it's a little bit of a negative pressure to just remove the, um, uh, the, uh, the hypochlorite. And then I'm, doing a, I'm going to do a cone fit here just to demonstrate the fit of the uh, cones, the master cones here. You got four canals here, and you can see the distal has been, uh, the paddle has been prepared to a large enough size. I'm using the advanced obturation technique by injecting directly into the uh, into each canal. Remember that you do need to have a microscope and or magnification illumination to do this, otherwise you don't know if you're injecting too much or too little. But either way, you're only supposed to inject um, halfway up the root and then use uh, your either your master file or a different file to merely push the sealer down the canal. Uh, if you have too much sealer you'll end up having a problem with the cones and not fully seating or potentially uh, causing too large of a puff. Here I'm now seating my paddle canal, paddle cone, which is uh, basically um, a size 60. It's been fitted uh, for this uh, canal. And then I'm using the uh, EndoPro 270 here, and just quick activation, and it goes to the place where it was pre-fitted prior to placing of the cone. And then just by, uh, uh, rem uh, just by letting it cool down for a few seconds and then reactivating it, uh, it engages the remaining portion of the gutta percha and removes the handle very easily. I'm then um, 